Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to teach on the power of faith-filled words, and this is a brand new teaching that I have out. I talk about this a lot, but the teaching that I had on words is over, I don't know, 35 or 40 years old. And so I just felt like it was time to teach on this and not just reference it, but to teach on it. And so we have this brand new teaching. This is a DVD set that was taken from our television programs. We also have a CD set, and then I have another DVD set that is actually a live teaching. And there is going to be a difference between some of this. The live teaching and the teaching that I did here on uh, television, I didn't teach it exactly the same. It's the same subject, uh, but it's going to be a little bit different. So actually, you could get a broader uh, understanding and a broader teaching on this if you were to take the live teaching and put it together with what was done here on TV. Yesterday, I was uh, ministering from Psalms chapter 19, and basically I've been talking about how words are powerful. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. God created everything by words, therefore everything responds to words. And then I began to start talking about how that if we don't put faith in God's word, we will never have the wisdom to direct our words nor the faith to believe that the words we speak will come to pass because it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the faith that it takes to believe in your heart and make the word of God come alive comes from the word. So our words and the power of our words are linked to God's Word. And if you don't believe, I mean believe uh, in the perfection of the Word of God, then you aren't going to have the faith to direct your words or the wisdom to direct your words. So that's what we've been talking about. And yesterday I was talking out of Psalms 19, verse 7. It says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. There's a lot of people that believe that the Word of God is not perfect. They believe that there's all kinds of mis representations and contradictions in the Word, and that's just not so. I could spend days and days explaining things that at one time looked contradictory to me, and yet as I've studied the Word, God has shown me the perfect balance and harmony between them. And people who say that the Word of God contradicts itself are people that don't really study the Word. They're people that have gone to some passage and have taken it and analyzed it and tried to get, they're looking for something. It's just like I tell people all the time that if they come to my meeting looking for something to criticize, I got something for you because I guarantee you I just make mistakes. But I, unlike me, the Word of God doesn't make mistakes, but there are people who, uh, who think that because they take stuff out of context and don't see how it works together. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. In verse 8, it says, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Man, I love that. You know, I've already given some examples of how I was suffering persecution in the army and just criticizing because of that. There's, you know, feelings of discouragement and things like this coming against me. And all I did, just spend six hours, eight hours studying the Word. And man, it just, I mean, it just transformed me. I've done that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, fighting discouragement stuff. The Word of God will cause your heart to rejoice. I can say it this way. If your heart isn't rejoicing, it's because you aren't in the Word of God. Something has taken your attention off of the Word of God. You've got some circumstance, some problem that is occupying your attention more than the Word of God because if your heart was truly in the Word of God, you would rejoice in your heart. And there's people watching this program right now that says, that's not true, you don't understand, I just lost someone. Well, were they born again? If they were born again and if you were focused on the Word of God, you could recognize that, man, they are now in the presence of the Lord. You know, I remember an employee I had whose little daughter died because she fell in a pond that he made. She was only one year old. 
And it was a tragic situation, and the guy felt terrible about it. And they didn't even want a funeral, but they did have a um, service where you could go to the funeral home and just come by and see them. And hundreds and hundreds of people showed up. And because of that, um, you know, they asked me to just uh, spontaneously, they said, all of these people are here. Would you hold some kind of a memorial service? And man, I hadn't thought about it. I hadn't prepared. It was a tragic situation. And people were taught just, they were crying and saying, she'll never know what it's like to have her first birthday cake. She'll, they'll never know what it's like to go to her first day of school, to ride her bike, to fall in love, to have children, to grow. And they were talking about all of the stuff that she was missing. And it was just sad. I stood there beside him and I heard all of these hundreds of people file by and make these uh, comparisons. And man, I was just fishing for God. What do I say? And the Lord led me over to 1 Thessalonians where it says, don't sorrow for those who have died as others who have no hope. And he started reminding me of all kinds of scriptures about in the presence of the Lord. It'll be so glorious that we won't even feel like the sufferings of this life are even worthy to be mentioned, not even worth comparing. And I started talking about how that, you know what, it's not anything wrong with missing this little girl for us, but we need to recognize it's us that won't get to see her first birthday cake. It's us that won't get to see her getting her first bike. It's us who will miss her first day of school. It's us who will miss her falling in love and having a family. But she isn't missing a thing. She is with the Lord Jesus and she is being comp uh, compensated more than we could ever imagine. And see, this is what I'm saying. The Word of God, if you keep your heart stayed on the Word of God, when a tragedy happens and a person goes to be with the Lord, it'll take away this grief so that you don't grieve like the sorrow of the world. And you can get on with your life and you can take credit in, I mean, the comfort in the fact that they're with the Lord and that He's compensating them and that you will see them again. It's not goodbye, it's just so long for a while. We will be reunited with those that we love. That's awesome. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If you're going through a divorce, you could sit there and say, well, thank you, Jesus, that you promised you'd never divorce me. Thank you for your faithfulness. This is a terrible situation, but you know what? And you could find something to rejoice in. If you're going through bankruptcy, if you're going through financial problems, you could take comfort in the fact that in heaven I'm going to live in a mansion. I'm going to live on a street that's paved with gold. I'll never have another sorrow. I'll never be hurt again. I promise you the word of the Lord will cause your heart to rejoice. If you aren't rejoicing today, it's not because of your problems. It's because you're focused on your problems instead of focused on the Word of God. And I don't believe there's any exceptions to that. I've been through some terrible things. I saw my son die, but I gave testimony to this this week that even though I had all of the sorrow and the grief and stuff coming against me, because of the Word of God, it just rose up in my heart. And I started praising God. And this was before I knew that he was raised from the dead. It was before I knew the end result. And yet I just chose to rejoice. Because the, the, if you're believing, you will rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what the scripture says. The word of God just rejoices your heart. And because I was full of the word of God, even facing death, I could still rejoice. And I know some of you think, well, you're weird. Well, I think you're weird. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying that I'm telling you that this is working for me. Don't wake me up. This is how I'm living my life. And I have so many situations come against me that should upset me, and they don't. You know, I just recently had some things happen. I won't go into it, but I had some things happen this last week. Actually, I guess, yeah, it was last week. And it could have just derailed me and got me upset. And I just remember telling the guys, I said, look, it's no big deal. Things will work out. God work all this together for good. It's going to happen. I said, it's no big problem. I tell you, the word of God will make a difference in your heart. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. And this didn't say for, except for those who have a chemical imbalance, except for those who are manic depressive, except for this condition and that. No, we have all kinds of natural things today 
that give us an excuse to be depressed and discouraged and make us feel that it's not our fault and we can't control this. It's just in our DNA, but that's not true. God told you to rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. And he didn't put a qualification on it except for those who have a certain condition. No, it's a command. And he would have been unjust to give you a command that you can't keep. Psalms 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That would be unjust to command something like that if it couldn't be done. It can be done. And we are buying a lie from the devil and using excuses and not standing up and taking our authority. But I'm telling you, if you would get in the Word of God, it would deliver you from your depression and from your discouragement. I've got testimonies of people that were committed to mental institutions and got hold of this very teaching and they are out today and productive and ministers. I've had people that were just having all kinds of mental, emotional problems and get totally set free from it. It doesn't matter who you are and what you're fighting. Your answer isn't a pill. It's the gospel. It's the word of God. It will cause your heart to rejoice. It goes on to say in that same verse, verse 8, that the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. How many times do you face situations that you say, God, I don't know what to do? And you pray and ask for wisdom. But how many times do you go to the Word? The Word of God will give you wisdom. The Word of God will teach you what you need to know. I'm not saying that you don't pray. You ask God for specific direction. You ask Him to guide you because there's a lot of things in this Bible you can't just sit down and in one time read it all. So you need to be directed and guided, but you ought to look to the Word of God to give you wisdom instead of just praying and asking for it, and you aren't following any of the precepts. You don't know what it says. I tell you, if you don't know the Word of God, it really limits how God can speak to you. My personal example is that, I mean, I'll pray and ask God for wisdom, and 99 times out of 100, He will quicken a scripture to me. He will bring some truth from the Word of God that I've learned back to me and apply it to that situation. And that is how the Holy Spirit directs me and speaks to me the vast majority of the time. If you don't know the Word of God, you are really limiting the way that God can speak to you. Man, those are powerful statements that I'm making right there. In verse 9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. You know, today we hear so many different things that after a while you get to thinking, which is, what's truth? Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What is truth? John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And John chapter 17, verse 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God is truth. Jesus is the word made flesh and dwelt among us. The word of God is truth. And you can't really discern and rightly understand things unless you know the word of God. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, it says, The word of God is quick, that means alive, and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. If you want to know truth, if you want to be able to distinguish between what is in the spirit and what's in the flesh, right and wrong, you must know the Word of God. I don't care how sincere you are, how well-meaning you are, if you don't know the Word of God, you are just prime candidate to be deceived. You aren't smart enough to run your own life. You need the instruction of God's Word to tell you what is right and what is wrong. It's true. It's righteous altogether. In verse 10, more to be desired are they than gold. Talking about the words of God. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. You know what? If people really believe this, we would spend a lot more time studying the Word of God and seeking the Lord than we would uh, out here working and doing all these things. The scripture says, if you don't work, don't eat. So I'm not saying that we quit working and go live in a monastery, but I'm saying we would put a greater emphasis on learning the Word of God. You know, if you really believe this, every person 
that watching this program would be in Bible school. You may not come to my Bible school. You may not move and go to some place and sit under the Word four or five hours a day, but you would be in Bible school. You would be letting the Holy Spirit teach you. You'd take correspondence. You'd go to church. You would have a hunger in you to know the Word of God. This says we, it, it's more to be desired. The Word of God is more to be desired than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Most people do not live their life that way. Most people by far put the vast majority of their effort into making money, into getting their natural needs, needs met, and they don't take any uh, account of their spiritual needs. They just let that go. Many people move to a different place and take a job promotion, and they don't know if there's a church there that's going to help them spiritually. They don't know what the spiritual climate's like. They don't know whether the people they're working with are believers or unbelievers. They don't even evaluate things like that. That's not important to most people. And yet this is saying that knowing the Word of God is more to be desired than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Man, that's powerful. I believe that God is speaking to some people through this program today. And you're in the process of doing some things that right now God is just showing you that your priorities are all out of whack. You need to put a priority on the Word of God, knowing God, your relationship with God. That's more important than some of these other offers that have been given unto you. That's a word from God. You've been asking and asking God for wisdom, and here it is. And some of you are just shocked, like, could this be true? Yes, this is God speaking to you and telling you that you ought to put an emphasis on knowing Him. You ought to honor Him and your relationship with Him and your relationship with your family and the things that God has told you to do ahead of money. Don't ever seek money only. We have to have money. Don't sit down and deny it. You need to work. If you don't work, don't eat. But don't put the priority on money. Put the priority on knowing God and doing what God has called you to do. You should desire it more than gold, yea, than much fine gold. And then it goes on to say in that same verse, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Did you know that you ought to desire the Word of God more than you desire food? And there are many people watching this program that all you have to do is look sideways in a mirror and you can tell that you desire food a lot more than you desire the Word of God. You need to get to where you place a priority on it. Uh, Job said it this way, that he had esteemed the Word of God more than his necessary meat. He esteemed the Word of God more than he wanted to eat. You know, this is what fasting is all about. Some people have mistakenly thought that fasting makes you pitiful in the eyes of God. And for whatever reason that he wasn't wanting to move in your life, when you fast and begin to waste away, then even an hardened uh, God will have mercy on you and it'll, it'll somehow or another give you extra pull or power with God. Fasting doesn't change God's heart towards you. It changes your heart towards God. It puts a priority on, I would rather be sustained by every word that comes out of the mouth of God than I had to be sustained by my necessary food. And it's a way of denying your flesh and feeding your spirit. And that's powerful. If we just got to where we desired the word of God more than we desired food, that would transform your life. You talk about the power of faith-filled words. It would change everything if we begin to start disciplining our flesh and feeding our spirit instead of our, our flesh. It goes on to say in verse 11, Moreover by them is thy servant warned. Did you know most people just go through life in a sense like a blind person, bumping into walls, falling over things, headed for a cliff, for a car, for a train wreck or whatever, because they just, it's like they can't see. They just stumble through life and take whatever comes. If you would get in the Word of God, the Word of God will warn you. It will show you problems. It will prevent making problems. I have so many people that come to me, and their life, there is no way that they could have made the mess of their life that they have by themselves. It is supernatural. Nobody could get into these problems on their own. And yet they just go their own way. The devil deceives them. They make these humongous messes. And then they turn to the Lord and ask God to fix the problem. 
How much better would it be to get into the Word of God and let God warn you and show you, no, this is not the person that you should marry. No, you should not be living in this way. You shouldn't have this career. Don't make this decision. Get out of the stock market. Things aren't going to work. If you would let the Holy Spirit speak to you, he could prevent problems instead of just always coming trying to fix problems after you've made a mess of everything. Man, that's powerful. It says, Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. And again, the context of this is talking about the Word. You just cannot figure things out on your own. You need the Word of God to enlighten you and show you these things that you don't even recognize that you're doing wrong. In verse uh, 13, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be uh, upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. You know, I'm running out of time today. I wish I had time to talk about that. But presumptuous sins are sins where you just do it your own way and it wasn't malicious. You didn't mean anything bad by it. It was just your carnal wisdom and you know what? The Word of God will keep you from those presumptuous sins. In verse 14, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Notice he said, Let the word of my mouth, talking about his confession, be right in the sight of God after he had spent all of these verses talking about the Word of God and how perfect it is and how it would convert your soul and make your heart rejoice and give wisdom to you, etc. You are not going to have the words of your mouth come out right. You aren't going to be speaking the right thing and you will be unable to believe in the power of faith-filled words until, first of all, you exalt God's Word and put it first place in your life. There's a reason that verse 14 came after verse 17 through 7 through 13. It's because you have to put God's Word first in your life. Boy, this is powerful. I really believe that today God has spoken tremendous things. And you know, it's like it says over in 1 Thessalonians 2.13. Paul was praising the people because they received it, not as the Word of man, but as it was in truth the Word of God that lives and abides forever. I believe that God has spoken to many, many people through this program today, and I just encourage you to receive it as it is in truth, not the Word of Andrew Womack, but the Word of God. I've been expounding the Word of God. I believe that the Holy Spirit has spoken through me, and God has given direction to you that could change your life, but you have to mix it with faith. You have to believe it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit speaking through me, speaking directly to you, and you need to humble yourself and receive it. And if there's adjustments that need to be made, make them. But if you would receive this word and act on it, it would change your life. The power of the word of God is awesome. And once you understand that and humble yourself and receive it, then your words can be powerful and you can have whatsoever you say. I'm out of time today, but we are offering a brand new teaching entitled The Power of Faith-Filled Words, and I encourage you to please call or write and get these materials. Also, today will be my last day to offer you the third teaching in this five-part set. And so listen to our announcer and then call or write and request these materials. And join me again next Monday as we continue the gospel truth. Andrew's complete teaching titled, The Power of Faith-Filled Words, was recorded live at a recent conference. It's available on either CD or DVD, or if you prefer, you can get the DVD as seen on TV. Each is available for 16 pounds. Remember to specify CD, DVD, or DVD as seen on TV when you contact us. This series is also available for audio download absolutely free on our website. Go to awme.net, click on Resources at the top of the page, and then MP3 Downloads on the left. The third audio teaching in today's series is available for three pounds. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will send this third CD titled, Put God's Word in Your Heart, Free of Charge. We'd also like to remind you that Andrew's book titled, Living in the Balance of Grace and Faith, has been released in paperback. It's available for £9.99. Contact us today to get your copy. 
You can use your credit card to order resources by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922 473 300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44 1922 473 300. Helpline hours are from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. If the lines are busy, you can visit our website where you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at awme.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We hope to hear from you today. Andrew Womack Ministries has offices located around the world. To locate an Andrew Womack Ministries office near you, go to awmi.net and click Contact Us at the top of the page. If you've ever wanted to know what it's like to be a student at Karis Bible College, here's your chance to find out at the 2012 CBC Campus Days event, March 14th through 16th in Colorado Springs. Interact with current and future students. Attend classes with Andrew Womack and other Karis Bible College instructors and discover how attending CBC can change your life and put you on the path to becoming a world changer. Make plans now to attend the 2012 Karis Bible College Campus Days event, March 14th through 16th in Colorado Springs. Log on to karisbiblecollege.org for more information and registration. Karis Bible College, an extension of Andrew Womack Ministries. When Andrew and Jamie were young, they went to a conference on biblical prosperity. They desperately wanted to get the teaching, but simply could not afford it. Andrew promised God that if he was ever in a position to make his teaching available, he would never deny it to someone for lack of funds. And that's what motivated me really to give, is uh, the fact that he gives his stuff away. Our hearts are just tied with what Andrew's doing, what he's trying to accomplish. The partnership is helping do what I can't do. I know that I'm a part of something so big and my gifts can help reach the nations and the people. Whoever has ears to hear, they will hear. Never despise small beginnings. Hungary, a former satellite of the Soviet Empire, is now a distribution center for Andrew Womack's teaching materials. From this small village house, boxes everywhere. <laughs> Andrew's translated books are being shipped across Europe in 19 languages, with more to come. Each book shipped from this house is a seed planted for a multiplied harvest to come. They got about every spot in here used. For more information, log on to awmi.net. Look to the left and click on Ministry News. Then click on today's TV news story. Find out what's happening with the world changers at Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College today.